So we're going to talk about self tolerance and self tolerance is how B cells and T cells get trained or they mature not to kill yourself, <laughs> not to destroy the tissues and the cells and everything inside yourself so you don't have autoimmune diseases. So first of all there is central, there's central lymphoid organs. Uh, there's the thymus for the T cells and the bone marrow for B cells and that's kind of a mnemonic to help you remember that T and T and B and B. So <clears throat> we'll talk about the thymus, how things happen in the thymus and there's little, there's less known about how things happen in the bone marrow with the B cells but we'll talk about uh, in the thymus how things happen. So in the medulla, or in the center of the thymus, there is a thymic epithelial cell. And this thymic epithelial cell, what it does is it transcribes DNA, the, you know, this is its nucleus, and inside the nucleus there's DNA. This DNA gets um, transcribed and then translated into proteins, and a protein's built, and then this protein is hoisted up on top of this major histability complex. And in the case of this thymic epithelium, it creates, it, it, it builds proteins that are self-peptides. And then you have a T cell here, and if this T cell reacts to this uh, self-peptide, there's a process that undergoes and the cell undergoes apoptosis or apoptosis or however you like to say that word. Um, I've heard it say it, I've heard it pronounced several different ways. I like saying apoptosis. So that's what happens if it reacts to this this self uh, protein that undergoes apoptosis. And I'm going to move over here. I'm going to move over to this uh, uh, actually I'm gonna move over to right here and talk about this this picture here for a little bit so I kinda try to try to blow this process up because it's this is a really fascinating thing about uh, T cells the thymus and uh, the immune system so this is a thymic cell here and inside the nucleus of the thymus cell you have DNA now remember all cells will accept you know red blood cells and different cells that don't have DNA but any any cell that has DNA and a nucleus inside of it has the DNA for the whole your whole genome your whole body so in this thymic cell it has the DNA of a brain cell uh, you know a muscle cell that's in your leg the cartilage cell the you know if there's ligaments right here the ligament cells lungs these are lungs this is the heart obviously heart doesn't look like that but for you know cartoon images it's fine every cell in your body this this thymic cell has the DNA for it and vice versa but what makes the thymic cell different than a brain cell that's different than the heart cell is that certain parts of the DNA is being read and being transcribed transcribed first and then translated into proteins that make up these uh, you know these these cells or you know the cellular components and the different things so this thymic cell if he wants to because the immune system has to be aware of every different protein possible in your body so the thymic cell, what it does, let's say this part of the genome is for the heart, okay? And let's say this part of the genome is for the brain. Now I'm oversimplifying things like mad, but just to kind of get us a conceptual understanding. And then let's say this part of the thing, the DNA is for uh, cartilage and ligament. And then, you know, this part over here, Let's just finish that off. Let's say this part right here is for the lungs. So what's going to happen is the DNA is going to be 
red and proteins are going to be made that are in all of these locations every location all over your body and these little proteins that are going to be made actually they get made out here in the cytoplasm they they get made and then they get shipped up to this major histability complex and they get plopped on right there every single type of protein from all over your body is made by this thymic cell and then place up here on this major histability complex type 1 and the T cell which is the CD8 plus cell reads reads the major histability complex type 1 now the T cells the CD4 they read the major histability complex 2 so let's say there was a brain pro oh, sorry out here there's a brain protein made it gets shipped up here gets plopped up here on this major histability complex type 2 and this T cell CD4 plus cell reads it. Now if these cells respond to any number of these proteins that are displayed on these uh, major histability complex then they undergo apoptosis. They, they, let's go back, oops sorry, let's go back to this picture is they die. They die because you don't want cells that react to yourself, these proteins over here that react to yourself, you don't want them in your bloodstream because when they come across uh, you know, let's say a part of your cartilage or a ligament or something, a little protein that has to do with your ligament, they're going to attack it. And then that's what autoimmune diseases are. But we'll get to that. So they undergo apoptosis. Okay. And a second pathway is that, well, this is kind of the normal pathway. This is normal. So if they pass the test, and I don't know how many, you could probably Google this, but how many proteins they're exposed to before they're shipped out it's millions billions I don't know um, but anyways the once they pass the test if you will the protein is the the T cell is then shipped out into the peripheral and what happens is that an antigen presenting cell uh, let me change colors here an APC antigen presenting cell um, you know comes up you know let's say there's a microbe in in your body or whatever it will it will kill it and it will display part of it you know all the different protein now there's not just one there's you know hundreds thousands of these little complexes on this cell surface but all the little parts of that microbe will then be displayed on these major histability complexes and these T cells will then sense if you know read will detect this little protein and if it's not the one that it's was told not to destroy then it will undergo a T cell response and it will the body will fight against that pathogen now there is a little tiny proteins there's these two little proteins that are very important this B7 molecule on this APC and this CD28 that's on the T cell. If these two molecules don't match up, let's say this APC, let's say there's not a B7 next to this APC, well then this won't this this T cell will will nothing will happen. And we'll see over here in a minute why that's important. Okay. Now there there's another Oh, I forgot to mention that what I'm describing now is what they call central tolerance. Central toler tolerance, which is ne talks about negative selection. Negative selection just means that if there's something bad, if one of these T cells react to uh, the individual, react to any proteins that are that are produced by the individual, well, then they're going to be negatively selected out of the population so that they don't cause autoimmune diseases. So the last type is um, these self-reactive clones. So let's say that this one is, um, let's say that this one, this cell right here reacts for, to, a sp to a specific protein that is made by this thymic cell from a different part of your body. If it reacts, what it will do is it will differentiate into a self-reactive clone. It will regulate into a it will differentiate into an irregular regulatory T cell. But before we go to the peripheral tolerance, because there's central tolerance and peripheral tolerance, 
we'll, I want to talk about this autoimmune regulator air protein. And to, and to do that, let me go back over to this picture here. So they found this uh, this auto this protein. It's a protein. This autoimmune immune regulator, and it's a protein that's in humans that is encoded by the air gene. And there's some you know portion of your DNA. You know, let's say it's maybe this portion. There's some portion of the DNA that is the air gene. And what happens is the air the autoimmune regulator this protein it kind of oversees oversees this whole process it kind of oversees this whole process of this thymic cell uh, making these proteins from all different part of your bodies and then putting them up here on the major histability complex it kind of oversees that and they found that if there's a mutation or if they can selectively knock out this regulator or this air gene in mice, then they get autoimmune diseases. So that's kind of an interesting, interesting concept. So, um, so now that we've talked about central tolerance, let's talk about peripheral tolerance. And you can kind of guess that this is kind of a crude, you can kind of see here, this is a kind of a crude process. You know, this whole maturation of T cells and B cells. This, this process is kind of a crude process and there's a, there's a term that's called slippage. Slippage of both T cells and B cells. Some, some T cells either slip out of the thymus area or the thymus jurisdiction before they are trained or exposed to all these different these different proteins and you know maybe some of them might be self reactive to a few a few different parts of your bodies so that's kind of that's kind of what this concept of slippage is and another let me kind of sorry I'm going to go back over to here real quick so this process that I described in the thymus happens in the bone, too, in in B cells, and we're not exactly sure exactly who creates all the proteins, uh, how the proteins for all the different parts of your body is created and exposed to the B cell, but it is, and there's a concept called receptor editing. And because these receptors are just proteins, you know, there's a little protein here, a little, you know, amino acid that makes up proteins. There's, this is some amino acid sequence. These proteins are just, you know, they're kind of manufactured. So if this protein matches or this amino acid sequence aligns itself with some other protein, if you talk about the biochemistry, it's getting really complicated. But these proteins, these proteins, these receptors, they can have a second chance, if you will. They kind of get a second chance, which is receptor editing. They'll kind of, they'll kind of recombine themselves to see if that they'll become less reactive, and that's called receptor editing, and that's a, the second chance for the B cells. The T cells, unfortunately, don't get that. They just undergo cell apoptosis. So once you're out here in the peripheral, you have peripheral tolerance too. And that's kind of the deleted or effectively muzzled uh, T cells and B cells. B cells. This is how the, the T cells and B cells that kind of slipped out, if you will, how they become deleted or muzzled. And there's three of them. There's three pathways. There's the energy pathway, the suppression pathway, and the apoptosis pathway. So this apoptosis pathway is kind of analogous to what happened, what happened in this situation. If they uh, respond to a self-peptide that's out here in the peripheral, then they undergo apoptosis. Now, yeah, let's talk about energy first. Energy, A means without or none and then you know energy so it's without energy is kind of what that's saying so remember over here this B7 molecule right here 
if this B7 molecule is missing, it doesn't matter that this T cell is um, responding to a self-peptide. It will just go undergo energy, which means it won't do anything. It won't respond. And so tissue cells or APCs that lack this B7 protein right here, because this B7 has to bind with the CD28 protein along with this this alignment. So if that doesn't happen, they'll just it'll just undergo energy. Nothing will happen. This regulatory T cell that was reacted to uh, its its own self now has has turned into a regulatory T cell. And what happens is this process right here would normally cause autoimmune type symptoms, but this regulatory T cell somehow says, oh, hey, you know, I'm going to regulate this right here, and this leads to suppression. So this T cell is suppressed, and it doesn't respond in a negative way that would cause autoimmune types type symptoms. So that's it. That's how uh, T cells and B cells are trained and matured. They're matured, T cells mature in the thymus, and B cells mature in the bone marrow. We'll see you in the next video. One more thing before we leave here is this this process right here, how this B20 or this uh, B7 molecule right here needs to um, also bind. So this ha needs to happen, and this needs to happen. Well, you can you know you can see the pharmacological uh, you know application here. If I create a drug that binds to this CD28 part of this T cell and inhibits inhibits the, you know let's say this this did have this cell did have a B7 molecule if there's a drug sitting on this receptor that's inhibiting it sensing this B7 molecule well then that suppresses the T cells and so that is one of the way this this drug these drugs mechanisms happen okay we'll see you in the next video